Uh, okay, so our next speaker is uh, Robert Lalonde from University of Ottawa. Thanks everyone for being here. So uh, today I'm going to be discussing uh, the actinodin gene family and its potential contributions to the fin to limb transition. So about 375 million years ago, lobe fin fish uh, crawled out of the water and evolved into tetrapods. Uh, during this transition, the endoskeletal elements became increasingly more complex and the exoskeletal elements, so the fish fin rays, became increasingly reduced in transitional tetrapods before being completely lost during the later stages of limb evolution. We are interested in identifying some of the molecular mechanisms that contributed to this loss of fin exoskeleton. And return to my title slide, we are working on the actinodin gene family. These code for structural proteins in the fin. They are absent from all tetrapod genomes, suggesting they were lost during the fin to limb transition. So during this presentation, I'm going to be talking to you about some of the roles of actinodin during fin development, as well as proposing some hypotheses on how these genes were lost during tetrapod evolution. So just very briefly, pectoral fin development starts with the formation of a bud, uh, very similar to uh, tetrapod limb development, a thickening of ectoderm known as the apical ectodermal ridge, or AER, extends and folds to form a structure known as the fin fold, and this is unique in fish. The fin fold is composed of ectoderm and is supported by two rows of actinotrichia fibrils. And uh, actinotrichia are composed of collagen and actinodin proteins. So the next step involves the extension of the fin fold. Again, it is still supported by these actinotrichia fibrils, and now we have a population of mesenchymal cells that will migrate distally through the fold. So by three days or 72 hours post fertilization, we have a pectoral fin that looks something like this consisting of the fin fold made up of ectoderm supported by actinotrichia fibrils and a population of mesenchymal cells that are migrating distally in this direction. So actinodin or angines actually code for the structural proteins in the actinotrichia. There are four members in zebrafish and one through four. Actinodin expression correlates spatially and temporally with the formation of actinotrichia both in the median fin, seeing the length of the embryo here, here and here, as well as the pectoral fin here. This is an in situ hybridization for AND1. Furthermore, actinodin expression occurs in two distinct tissue types, the overlying ectoderm of the fin fold, as well as this population of mesenchymal cells that will migrate through, with one important exception being the distalmost ectoderm here, and you can see that early in pectoral fin development, the absence and early in median fin development here. So we believe these genes have important considerations regarding uh, tetrapod evolution. While orthologs have been identified in cartilaginous fish, uh, other bony fish, so lots of teleosts, lobe fin, uh, coelacanth, and lungfish, no orthologs have been identified in any tetrapod genome examined to date. We propose that changes in regulation of these genes likely contributed to their loss. Uh, we recognize that other scenarios are possible, including loss of function mutations or deletion events, However, considering uh, multiple AND genes were lost during tetrapod evolution, we consider this to be the most parsimonious scenario. We therefore set out to characterize the regulatory elements of one of these genes, actinodin 1. So to identify the regulatory elements, uh, we cloned a 2KB region upstream of the first non-coding exon, and we called this region 2P. So we simply cloned a GFP reporter gene and created a transgenic reporter line, 2P and 1 eGFP. And what we get is that reporter expression is able to recapitulate endogenous expression in the median as well as the pectoral fin. So just a reminder, we're getting expression in the overlying ectoderm as well as the mesenchyme of the fin fold. So this tells us within our 2P element are tissue-specific regulatory elements or enhancers for mesenchymal and ectodermal AND1 expression. To test the functionality of these elements in tetrapods, we created a transgenic reporter mouse line where we took our 2P fish element and inserted the LAXZ reporter gene. And uh, despite the disappearance of these genes from tetrapods, the ectodermal enhancer remains functional in both the forelimb and the hindlimb. Uh, in contrast, however, to our zebrafish line, no reporter expression is observed in the mesenchyme. So uh, we have a whole mount here, uh, close-ups of the forelimb and the hindlimb, and these are sections taken along this axis. And this best demonstrates the absence of mesenchymal reporter expression. 
Uh, you'll note the absence of reporter expression in the apical ectodermal ridge, and this is very reminiscent of early actinodin expression in the pectoral fin, as well as our 2P and 1 EGFP transgenic line. Um, we propose the presence of ectodermal expression suggests a potential homology between finfold ectoderm and the autopod ectoderm of tetrapod limbs. However, uh, the absence of mesenchymal reporter expression suggests potentially uh, upstream activators or repressors may have been modified during tetrapod evolution. The next thing we wanted to do was isolate each of our enhancer elements. So we identified an ectodermal enhancer in this 150 base pair region epi. We cloned it with the human uh, beta globin minimal promoter and created an, uh, another reporter line, epi plus beta globin GFP. And using this fragment, we now get reporter expression restricted to the ectoderm of the median and the pectoral fin. So we analyzed this 150 base pair region using TransFAC, and this identifies uh, putative transcription factor binding domains, and basically we got a couple of nice clusters, and we, detest, uh, we um, tested these for enhancer activity. So we titled these epi1 through epi4, and each one was deleted one at a time from our 2P N1 EGFP construct. Uh, with the removal of epi sites 1, 2, or 4, we saw no change in ectodermal expression. However, with the removal of epi site 3, we saw the complete loss of reporter expression, uh, ectodermal reporter expression, leaving uh, simply mesenchymal reporter expression. So this tells us likely within our 23 base pair epi 3 site is our ectodermal enhancer, and within, within this region are binding domains for TCF proteins, and there are several TCF genes that we know are expressed in the finfold ectoderm. So this fits nicely. Uh, to identify our mesenchymal enhancers, the first thing we did was simply remove our epi fragment, and we created a, another transgenic line, 2P delta epi EGFP. And we determined actually that both surrounding fragments are required to drive reporter expression in the mesenchyme of the median and the pectoral fin, suggesting uh, multiple enhancers exist and are required simultaneously. Uh, we again analyzed uh, this fragment using TransFAC, so to identify uh, binding domains. <coughs> We're specifically interested in binding domains for high 5 prime Hox AD proteins. Uh, we know these genes are expressed in the correct finfold tissues. So we identified uh, five Hox A13 sites, one D, uh, Hox D13, and one Hox A11. And again, we decided to test each of these for enhancer activity. So these were called uh, MES1 through MES4, and we deleted, again, one at a time from our 2P Delta Epi EGFP construct. So with the removal of MES sites 2, 3, or 4, we saw no change in mesenchymal expression. However, with the removal of MES site 1, we saw a drastic decrease uh, in mesenchymal reporter expression. So uh, this suggests within our MES site 1 is indeed our mesenchymal enhancer, and this has binding domains for HOX D13, HOX A11, and HOX A13. Uh, from in situ hybridization data, we know that multiple 5 prime HOX AD genes are excellent candidates for mesenchymal activation. So you can see here uh, Hox A13A, uh, B, Hox D13, and you can see nice expression. This is the uh, mesenchyme of the uh, pectoral and the median fin. And this is very reminiscent of what we see in our uh, transgenic reporter line, 2P, Delta, Epi, EGFP. So this fits. So I'd just like to return to the transgenic mouse results for a second. So we propose that the absence of mesenchymal reporter expression in our transgenic mice suggests changes to upstream activator and reporter factors in tetrapods, uh, repressor factors, sorry. This could actually be changes in Hox D13, Hox A13, and Hox A11. So uh, we propose that changes in regulation of these genes likely contributed to their loss as opposed to um, other events. Um, several aspects of limb evolution have already been linked to differential expression of Hox D13 and Hox A11 in tetrapods. So we propose potentially that these tetrapod-specific expression patterns may actually be a mechanism of N1 mesenchymal downregulation during tetrapod evolution. Um, so now that we have identified these regulatory elements, we can now use them as molecular tools for other projects in the lab. So uh, another student is using these elements for lineage tracing experiments using the cree p system. Um, we are interested in identifying the contributions of both ectodermal and mesenchymal uh, cells to adult fin and fin rings, and this project's ongoing. Uh, another project of mine involves the ablation of finfold mesenchyme using the nitroductase metronidazole system. Um, specifically, I'm interested in identifying the contributions of these cells to larval and adult fin development, while also assessing whether finfold mesenchyme defects are a plausible mechanism of fin exoskeleton reduction during limb evolution. 
uh, and I'm happy to share some preliminary results of this project with you today. So this is our uh, transgenic uh, nitroreductase line. Our NTR enzyme is linked to the yellow fluorescent protein via the 2A peptide, so you can see nice um, reporter expression in the migrating mesenchyme of the median fin. Um, following metronidazole treatment, so uh, an ablation, we can use a tunnel assay to show that apoptotic cells are specific to the finfold mesenchyme, and you can see that nicely in the median fin here at 48, 60, and 72 hours post-fertilization. Um, at 72 hours post-fertilization, we show that there's a uh, kind of drastic reduction in size of the median finfold, as well as defects in cell migration. Uh, this is our metronidazole. Uh, experimental fish, and this is our DMSO treated controls. You can also see a loss of YP expressing cells as these uh, cells are ablated. Uh, to take a better look at the morphology of these cells, I crossed them with a simple GFP reporter line for mesenchymal cells. Uh, and you can see in our DMSO treated control, uh, these cells are migrating nicely through the fin, um, basically, an elongated branching shape. However, in our metronidazole uh, treated fish, you can see basically a cluster of rounded, dying cells really close to the trunk and those cells that are migrating have branching defects. Uh, one thing to note is that ablation efficiency does decrease when we um, outcross our YFPNTR fish. Uh, if we take a look at the pectoral fin development, you can see we have a reduction in finfold size as well in our metronidazole treated fish uh, compared to our uh, controls, and this is summarized in this graph here. Uh, we can also take a closer look at the finfold in the actinotrichia structure. Um, and basically, in our DMSO uh, treated controls, we have nice straight actinotrichia as the finfold forms. However, in our uh, metronidazole treated fish, basically, these actinotrichia are not supporting the finfold; they're completely curved, and we see that in uh, all of our all of our fish. So, very briefly, with that project, I showed you that following finfold mesenchyme ablation, we do see truncation in the median and the pectoral fin. Uh, I showed you that we're getting actinotrichia defects as well as defects in cell migration and cell morphology. Uh, I've also looked at changes in gene expression of the 5 prime Hox AD genes and have seen that following ablation, we do see reduction in both the median and the pectoral fin. Uh, however, the ultimate goal of this project is to assess the effects of finfold mesenchyme ablation on adult fin development. Uh, so I'm uh, progressing towards that now. Essentially, I want to assess whether finfold mesenchyme defects are a plausible mechanism for exoskeleton uh, reduction during limb evolution. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank my supervisor, uh, Dr. Mariandre Akimenko, as well as several of the lab, uh, lab members that contributed to this work, as well as those that are here today, uh, some collaborators in Montreal and at the University of Ottawa, and um, the MUM lab for the NTR plasmid. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, I'd be happy to answer those now. Yes. Hi, thanks, very nice. Thanks. Um, I'm wondering if the fin fold can recover after the ablation? <laughs> Excellent question. Um, I have no doubt it probably will. Uh, zebrafish seem to have the ability to regenerate everything. Right. Um, to basically get this sustained ablation, we're working on kind of um, short exposure treatments. Um, so we're in the progress of testing what we can do to them without killing them, because metronidazole is only relatively um, safe. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hi, can you, can you just comment on um, how the origin of the mesenchyme cells, but, um, with respect to paired fin versus medial fin, um, um, makes a difference in your model? So, so whether it's coming from the paraxial mesoderm or coming from lateral plate mesoderm? Um, Good question. Um, so, yeah, as, as you mentioned, uh, basically the source is different. Um, however, for our purposes, because they're expressing the same genes essentially and they're being regulated by the same enhancer elements, that works for us. We can ablate them. Um, it's the same kind of idea where, although we're looking at um, both median and pectoral fin ablation essentially, only the pectoral fin and pelvic fin are homologous to limbs but we can use the median fin as a model um, because, as I just mentioned, the way it's regulated and what's expressed in those tissues. With that, hopefully that answers. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Hi, nice talk. So I'm just a very simple question. I'm just wondering about the actinomyosin expression in adult and then enhanced activity. You, you said it sounds like the, it expressed in adult stage, right? But just curious, the actinomyosin is also important for maintenance other thing, 
So you see very strong enhanced activity in adult? Um, sorry, can you, so, can you repeat that question? I mean, the, you, I'm just wondering about the adult expression of, oh, of the actinomyosin. The, of the, act, the other actinodin genes? And gene and then enhanced activity also. Uh, Suppose. If, if I answer, are you talking about the, the other paralogs in zebrafish? No, I mean the DC enhancer and then actinomyosin 1 gene. Sorry, so, I, so can you see the GFP expression with other fin strongly? Without, oh, the like yeah. the, the dorsal, the ventral fins. I mean the other tail fin. You, I mean the you said that you wanna test this enhancer construct yeah. or this NTR line to study other fin experiments. So, just wondering, can you see very strong GFP expression in other? Oh, in the adult. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so several of our transgenic reporter lines are expressed mm -hmm. through to adulthood. Um, they fade out around two months. Uh, but during the regenerate, we get a high expression in the ectoderm and the mesenchyme. Um, so several members of our lab are also using ablation experiments uh, on the regenerates to see if we can disrupt that process uh, as well. But, but, how, but not strong in uninjured fin? In, in the other so fins? Uninjured fin? Oh, uninjured. Yeah. Uh, there's a kind of, as, as I mentioned, as they develop, the GFP expression yeah. does fade. Um, there's kind of a baseline, but really it's the, during, after amputation, do we see this distal upregulation in the blastema. Okay, thank you. That's good. I uh, a short question. Short question. Uh, no? We can talk after. <laughs>